ChatGPT was like released in November 2022. And then obviously kind of the whole AI tsunami started. This book was published in uh, January 23. So literally like six weeks after ChatGPT got released. What happened is that uh, the calculation of the publisher, which is Harvard Business Review, Mm. was that uh, generally business books sell about somewhere between five to 7,000 copies. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the uh, estimation of uh, the publisher. And you sell five to 7,000 copies, you end up making the mm. uh, Wall Street Journal bestsellers list. Mm. This book ended up selling 60,000 copies. Because of the number of books it was starting to sell, mm. they ended up essentially kind of publishing in uh, 13 different uh, languages. So how was the meeting uh, with the LG Electronics? It was very uh, engaging. Okay. So we had a lot of questions. Sorry. Uh, a lot of questions. Yeah, twenty plus questions, and we opened wow. opened it up. Okay. And I did request them that uh, the more they actually engage and the more questions they ask, the mm. better, as mm. opposed to me just kind of presenting. All right. And some of the questions were really good. So okay. actually, they got into the topic, the specificity of uh, what they could even contemplate. Okay. And perhaps uh, how they could kind of get started. So they're very engaging. All right. All right. That's why I think, the, uh, in addition to the 10 meetings, I invited all of our executives, <laughs> the leader of the, each division, you know. Yeah. Right. So they have a very key, you know, the question, sometimes a concern, sometimes a fear. Do you know how many AI experts we have in Deloitte? AI experts in Deloitte, over 6,000. Well, but I, I'm, I'm going to qualify this, okay? Mm-hmm. Number of partners in Deloitte who are fluent on the topic of AI and can sell AI. Mm-hmm. It's over 200 right now. So that's one. Mm-hmm. The second one is number of people who are working on AI client uh, mm-hmm. projects mm-hmm. is over 6,000. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we've got 1,100. 1,100 mm-hmm. AI projects around the world. How many Gen AI use cases we have, Deloitte Global? Um, over 300 of them. So we have an entire catalog of uh, what are the Gen AI cases by every single one of the sectors. Second, for about 120 of those 300 use cases, we even have proof of concepts that you could actually leverage. I do have a, a couple of questions, not belonging to my function, belonging to the leader of you know, HBU, because one of your role is to transform the individual service offering of HBU, right? Yeah. You know, tax, you know, audit, and TNT. Uh, we are driving to transform our tax, classic tax service yeah. using AI. Do you have any successful results in, in other participating forum for, for tax and SRT? So there's actually difficult discussion that's taking place specifically in tax. The most progressive BU that we have that's actually taking AI forward and applying it within their particular kind of uh, business is actually audit. Audit. More than even consulting. More than consulting. Why is that? A couple of reasons. One, audit is the first business that is globally standardized. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're globally standardized. Mm -hmm. Second, they practically mandate the usage of uh, Omnia. Okay, right. And third, Mm -hmm. all the gen AI capabilities that they're building is in Omnia. But when you perform audit All right. and you use Omnia, yeah. you essentially Understand. undertake, you benefit mm-hmm. from all the Gen AI capabilities that are being built mm-hmm. in, Omnia, in Omnia in a standardized fashion, available and accessible to every GR. For audit. For audit. I'm not surprised. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> First adopter. So what, so this is what gets me into trouble because I happen to be from that business. It's consulting. So it's it's because everything is bespoke. Right. Everything is bespoke. <laughs> and not only that, when you have debates, we are unique. In tax, it's very country specific. Mm-hmm. In very country specific. Mm-hmm. Here's an example. In Brazil mm-hmm. right now, here is kind of what is uh, happening. This is not an example with Deloitte Brazil, but Petrobras in Brazil, they actually contracted with an automation company mm-hmm. called Automation Anywhere. Mm-hmm. It was basically kind of one of those uh, original RPA companies. Okay. What Automation Anywhere has done, and the reason I kind of bring this up, is because Automation Anywhere is pivoting from RPA mm-hmm. to agentic AI. 
the first client that they're working with is the tax department of Petrobras. For the tax department of Petrobras, they are actually building tax AI agents that codify all the direct and indirect taxes in Brazil. And for the first phase of work that they've done, where they've built out five to six agents in direct taxes, they have saved $120 million in taxes for Petrobras. Mm -hmm. That $120 million is essentially being harvested, meaning some of that money from the $120 million of savings is being harvested, kept aside to fund the next phase. Mm -hmm. With the target mm -hmm. that over three years, Petrobras wants to save $5 billion in mm -hmm. global taxes. And that mm -hmm. tax savings, mm -hmm. now here's the incredible part, mm -hmm. that tax savings of $5 billion dollars with the first $120 million that was saved, there's not a single big four involved. Mm. It's all based on the tax department of a client working with a technology company, mm -hmm. building AI agents by codifying mm -hmm. the tax regulations. We sat down with the CEO of Automation Anywhere mm -hmm. who walked us exactly through this example, how they're building those agents for Petrobras. Mm -hmm. So we are right now trying to figure out, starting in the uh, Netherlands, where, in, where we have a tax operate mm -hmm. engagement. Mm -hmm. Work with Automation Anywhere the same way that they did with Petrobras to build tax uh, AI agents mm -hmm. for either direct or indirect taxes. Mm -hmm. One of those two kind of uh, areas. And that would become our entry point to get started, mm -hmm. particularly with agentic AI and introduce them in DNA. Why people create about the Gen AI or AI? Like say that when the industry four point concept is announced at the time, also it's big data AI for things. Moreover, like AlphaGo or Deep Blue, still they are a part of AI session. Correct. What kind of big difference at the time we just I mean, oh that's very straight, that's very interesting. Everyone is crazy about this AI. Why is that? Only one reason. Take AlphaGo that you mentioned. Uh -huh. If you were to interact with AlphaGo, uh -huh. what do you need? You need a data science degree. Uh -huh. So you have to be educated in data science. Uh -huh. You have to have skills in Python, which is the language system yes. of AlphaGo. With ChatGPT, what's the skill set you need? Korean. You don't need to know Python. You just need to know your native language. Okay. So ChatGPT, mm -hmm. the biggest innovation was it democratized accessibility of AI. Everybody without a STEM degree or a scientific degree could interact in their native language. Mm -hmm. So your programming language became English and Korean, not Python, not R, not any other computer science languages. Here is kind of what Agent TKI is about. Mm -hmm. It does one thing. Mm -hmm. If I put it very, very simply, it mm -hmm. tells you something. Mm -hmm. You prompt it, depending on what your prompt is, it'll tell you a recipe for your meal mm -hmm. or it'll give you some insight mm -hmm. relevant mm -hmm. to your business. People kind of like crack up at this. When I go and meet clients, mm -hmm. the one thing that I absolutely do not do mm -hmm. is any prep with the LCSP. Mm -hmm. I do not do any prep with the LCSP. Mm -hmm. The reason being, mm -hmm. for the Uber ride that it takes me to get to that actual client, mm -hmm. I just like flip to my phone. I've got ChatGPT. I've got Google Gemini and I've got Perplexity AI. Mm. I just prompt it and I know every single thing about the client. Mm. Their business divisions, their revenue, their market share, their challenges, opportunities, and what questions should a consultant ask them. Everything, I just prompt mm. it to basically kind of chat GPT and it prepares me. I don't need a tech from the LCSP. The reason I say that mm. story mm -hmm. is because all these Gen AI apps tell you something. Agent Tech AI does something. It doesn't tell you. It actually automates a job. It takes action. It does not generate poetry. Okay. It does not generate content. It does not generate images. It does not generate insights. Mm -hmm. It generates mm -hmm. action. Action. Task. It actually executes tasks, executes jobs. Example, one of the biggest problems we're going to face is in his business, mm -hmm. SAP. We have 6,000 ABA programmers in India mm -hmm. who actually are deployed on SAP engagements, right? ABA programs to customize the implementation. Mm -hmm. Now, SAP is working with NVIDIA to build custom Gen AI capabilities that will automate all our programs. Mm -hmm. So by the first release, they made accessible on, in the SAP platform 
is about 50% accurate in the ABAP programs it generates. Mm. January 1st, 2026, be 96% accurate. I think a lot of the clients are trying to figure out what it is they want to do. And I think our clients are still trying to figure out the sort of the do's and don'ts, you know, what it is that they need to invest in, what they're not. One of the conglomerates I know for a fact had $3 billion set aside. And I had a full team travel around the world to see if there was a company they could acquire to boost up their um, AI capabilities, right? So everybody's putting all that effort into it um, from monetary perspective and the time and the resources. And they look at us. They look to us as as Deloitte. This is something that we speak with local folks. This is something we speak with local digital and technology consulting companies like Deloitte. So I think more and more are going to get that sort of a vague request. Hey, what do we do about AI? So this is actually very funny that you mentioned this. Uh, and Monday and Tuesday, I was in Dusseldorf, Germany. One of the reasons was this because uh, I spent four to five hours with uh, Wolper, the CEO of uh, Deloitte in Germany. It was all around basically kind of the Gen AI market implications for Deloitte Germany, what type of services that we should be getting into, the reaction of clients in Germany and the regulatory market, and what Deloitte Germany may need to kind of think through over the next three years to be relevant in the market. So we're having that discussion. Those were all the topics. In the midst of those topics, there's a partly a funny, but partly a sort of a ugly moment that mm. took place. We have a lot of basically kind of fears and concerns mm. that we hear from German clients. Germany also tends to be a bit more conservative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's because of the EU regulations, we have concerns around privacy. We have concerns around security. We have concerns around usage. Mm. We have concerns around trustworthiness. We have concerns around ethical applications. We have concerns on this, 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 this. The destiny of the companies who actually kind of uh, they may not have been the they may not have been the leader. They may not have been the pioneer. Samsung was not a pioneer mm-hmm. in smartphones, but mm-hmm. Samsung avoided being the last follower. Mm. It was the second follower. Mm. And the advice to your clients in Korea, irrespective mm. of call it cultural conservatism, risk disposure, you may not be the pioneer compared to a company in Silicon Valley. Okay. But just make sure that you're not the last follower. I'm sure a lot of people have asked you success cases of clients that either embraced AI or implemented AI in some ways, right? Um, what was like the biggest failure case you've seen? Or, I mean, it may be a little too soon, it, even if it doesn't involve Deloitte, right? Like what was sort of like the biggest, ooh, kind of situation you saw with a, with a, with a client? So I'll say this, most of the failures are with clients and we have our fair share where both we and the client actually treat AI as just a technology that we're implementing. Mm-hmm. Think of what's actually happening with AI. Why is it so different? Apart from kind of what I just said, every single software that we've ever, ever implemented, SAP, Oracle, AWS, just Salesforce, okay? It's software that we have built Mm -hmm. based on rules, Mm -hmm. based on kind of how we have coded it. With AI, the difference is the software thinks. It thinks like us. Mm -hmm. It's not just coded. It learns Mm -hmm. the same way that all our children basically can learn. Mm -hmm. With every piece of data it interacts with, with every interaction with a human being, it is learning. Mm-hmm. The same way that our children can learn. Mm-hmm. And when you actually have a learning system in an organization and you just treat it as a technology that we're implementing, it ends up at failure. If you rather think it as a new workforce, aka mm-hmm. a digital workforce, not a human workforce, mm-hmm. for Ooh. which you need to culturally embrace it, you need to have a change management program, mm-hmm. and you need to get your employees ready to interact with a non-human, non-carbon-based workforce. Right. And you need to accept right. the decision-making of an intelligent entity that is not human. That is where that is where the success comes from. Mm-hmm. Success is based on cultural change, not on technology implementation. Mm-hmm. 